and we should be coming in. Awesome. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream and another podcast of sorts. I'm just going to put a little marker here, sound marker, because we are recording the sound through an external mic as well. Uh, because we will, we will be uploading these uh, to SoundCloud. And uh, today is May 6, 2020. And we're doing a live stream, open discussion on investing in personal finance. And uh, we have done a few of these over the last couple of years, uh, talking to people regarding um, just everything regarding investing in personal finance. And we do have a playlist on YouTube where we've uploaded a fair bit of uh, content. Uh, we basically started this, uh, started this discussion off with uh, a set of videos that I put out, uh, recorded videos, edited videos, where we talked about uh, just money, risk tolerance, um, investing and automation and cryptocurrencies and, and whatnot. A lot of the metrics that are involved in uh, investing in personal finance. Hello, Ripper, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. And I'm gonna give my uh, little introduction um, to these streams, uh, just so people that are watching this, either on Bitchute and YouTube, after the fact, after we go live, or listening to this on SoundCloud, because we will be uploading these audios to SoundCloud as well, I believe. I am active on Patreon, that's where I share a lot of information and it's patreon.com backslash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to follow this work patreon is a great place to be uh to support this work and to follow this work i don't put anything behind paywall so you can just follow the work and see what we're uploading and if you like uh the discussion here what we're doing um uh, patreon is a fantastic way to support this project we are live streaming this on twitch uh twitch tv twitch.tv Chicho Live, C H Y C H O L I V E. I'm well, brother. How are you? Hope all is well. Do, going fantastic, Ripper. Uh, I really look forward to these live streams, these discussions that we do have, and it's really nice when we, when it goes as planned, right? And so far, we've been doing pretty good. I think we've only missed one scheduled event over the last two years, which is a pretty good, uh, pretty good record. Knights of Old Comics, your intro should be the Pink Floyd song, obviously. The problem is copyrights, brother. Problem is copyrights. There's a lot of amazing music I'd like to share, and I have in the past, but copyrights keep on dinging us. And that's sort of related to personal finance and investing in economics and everything regarding our economy, right? Catholic traditionists, good evening, good evening. Oi, Graham, how's it going? Hey, guys, everyone's rolling in. I guess notifications went out. Um, so we are Twitch, uh, live streaming this on Twitch. And uh, if you want to support this project, uh, subscribing, following on Twitch is a great way to support this project. I am announcing uh, these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Twitter, Gabs, Mind, VK, and Elo. And all the links will be in the description of these videos and the audio on SoundCloud as well. Okay. And we are going to most likely uh when i start figuring it out uploading these audios to soundcloud any of the live streams that we do where we don't have any visuals involved we're gonna try to get onto soundcloud even more than that as well possibly right and uh we will be uploading these live streams on youtube and bitshoot everything on bitshoot technical difficulties permitting and as much as we can on YouTube, that is sensors permitting. And the next two streams we have after today will not be loaded on YouTube. They will be only available on BitChute because it's a discussion about CV and YouTube is eliminating channels that are talking about the CV COVID-19. Okay, and if you wanna know what all this personal finance stuff is about, we did put out a video basically introducing personal finance and I'll provide the link in the for the chat if you guys want to go there's a playlist of personal finance on our YouTube channel there's a lot of personal finance stuff uploaded to BitChute as well okay and um, 
there's an introduction sort of disclaimer video that I put out uh, early on just to let everyone know that this isn't really financial advice. This is my life experience that I'm sharing as much as I can uh, to let you know what, what my perspective on things are. Okay. Aside from that, I'm going to catch up with chat and uh, we're going to kick things off. Okay. I'm going to take down all these little notifications and all that jazz. Boop. Uh, let's check it out. Dragons, how are you doing? Hey guys, Chicho, have you heard of uh, Russell Peters? Very funny man. Russell Peters, the name's familiar, uh, familiar um, but I can't put the picture uh, face to it. Good evening, everyone. What's them uh, certification? BBY CPA fiduciary. Uh, CPA is chartered uh, PA accountant. I, I'm, I'm not sure. BBY. I. I took a little bit of accounting and I got my FI certificate from SAP and stuff, but acronyms are wacko. There could be a whole bunch of different things. You long on Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin? More of longs. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't uh, do cryptos as an investment. Uh, I treat cryptos as currency, right? So I'm not holding on to cryptos or anything like this. I don't, uh, that defeats the purpose of cryptos. Um, so, um, I, I can't say I'm long on crypto or a short crypto. Crypto is crypto. Bitcoin is Bitcoin, right? Cheryl, how are you doing? Or Sherry, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, hi all. Hello, hello, friends. Spider Man, how's it going? Thank you very much for all the links. Chicho, that's a fantastic mathematics percent, only missing one. Which one is that one? That's a fantastic mathematics percent, only missing one. Hmm. I'm not sure what that uh, what that refers to, Ripper. Uh, there have been reports of collection agencies freezing people. Yeah, for sure, Dragons. I heard about that too, right? Uh, right now, what's going on? Fast car, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Good evening, good evening. Uh, I'll be lurking tonight. No worries, Spider-Man. Lurk away. It should be fine. Sorry, I won't be around uh, to help out. Much love, chat, and Chicho. Much love. VC, hi, Chicho. How are you doing? How are you doing, VC? This may be a naive question, but why is YouTube doing that? I didn't really understand the censorship COVID stuff. Uh, Graham, it's about control, period, right? It has nothing to do about ad revenue and all this jazz. It's gone past that now. Wall Street is past that now, right? You know, under the guise of uh, shareholder value, they have become complete technocrats and totalitarian uh, state where they don't want any other discussions and theories there's a certain agenda that they are pushing and a lot of the same people are on the same boards of most of the large companies so they're in harmony together there is no dialogue discourse allowed outside of the narrow narrow pipeline that they have just Graham just think about it as our education system right the education system is reduced down to a, sh a small little box that everybody they're trying to fit everybody in and it's breaking right and that's what we're seeing right now in regards to the economy and censorship and platforms and disruptive innovation and whatnot lonely piggy how are you doing sweet some late night chicho late night chicho good evening chicho mike how are you doing <laughs> and smith i love it airman uh, dragons chicho what's your take on hoarding cash as opposed to a checking account there have been reports of collection agencies freezing account yeah dragons you right now right now the corporations the big boys the governments the institutions they're all coming after money right i mean here i'll give you one example okay patreon just today announced that they're going to start collecting uh, tax on uh, for, I don't know, they said it's going to affect like 30% of 30 to 40% of their, the people who are, who are supporting content creators, right? So counties, states, or not counties, but I guess states and in the U.S. anyway. So states are coming after tax revenue, right? Because their coffers are empty. They're tapped out right they got bonds of the yin yang that are useless right they're you know they need to keep the bubble going that's the reason why trillions of dollars went to wall street 
2008 and again now right so governments are out of money they're going to increase taxes right patreon just announced today they're going to start taxing people supporting content creators right they're going to run an algorithm through like for me i'm thinking about changing the description of the tiers so the algorithm the automation doesn't nail people for taxes right i'll think about this a little bit longer and i might discuss it with the people on patreon to see how they want to approach this thing right it's not going to be very much but a little bit little bit little bit they're going to skim off the top skim off the top skim off the top skim off. ebay did the same thing right a few months ago ebay while we were selling the comic books if you remember eBay introduced taxes for, I forget what it was, 15 states, 13 states, right? California, people that were buying comic books off me before that kicked in were paying, how much was it, 9%, 10% less in purchase price, right? As soon as that thing kicked in, they were paying 9%, 8%, 10%, whatever it was, more. Certain states were charging six and a half, some were charging seven, right? So states are coming after people's money. I do not recommend people to keep all their funds in banks. If you recall, uh, laws have been passed to allow banks to seize people's assets, okay? It, in Europe, it has. In the States, it's a little bit uh, funny. I don't think it's passed in Canada yet. They can't, uh, it's not called a ba um, bailout. It's called a bail-in, like they can seize funds the basically same thing that cypress did so you need to diversify you need to diversify there's a lot of things a lot of places a lot of industries a lot of countries a lot of states they're gonna go bankrupt they're gonna go bankrupt they are already bankrupt but they're officially gonna go bankrupt and they're gonna come after people man okay are you good at chess airman i used to be better when i was younger because i played a lot more smith you heard about the kong dot cash crypto they have uh, physical bills you can trade it no i haven't heard about it uh, smith hit enter hit enter too soon up there you hit enter too soon. all regarding your comment sorry if this is uh, more current events but what's your opinion on the recent attempts of tenants trying to rent strike uh i'm i'm pro uh tenants right uh, there are people that own property that is investment is one person and they got their life savings in it and i those people need to be protected as well right landlords there's no doubt about it landlords need to be protected as well they're part of us they're part of our community there are people that don't want to own property right they don't want to lock themselves in so the only way they can live in a place is if they they have to rent so landlords are something that's needed within our economic system however there's a serious problem that occurred in 2008 because the 2008 it was real estate crash driven really but it was just basically scams right but what happened after 2008 scam you know they call it the financial crisis i don't like that word you got to call it for what it is it was plain straight out theft until this uh, bailouts the trillions of dollars that were announced because of the pandemic right until now that was the largest theft in human history really and back then you know i was writing blogs and stuff i said look if we don't if we allow this to happen this bailouts to happen to give wall street money the next one is going to be bigger than this one and this one is bigger than the 2008 but what happened in 2008 obama came in and they gave money they brought wall street they put it in administration they gave all the money to wall street right so they bailed out hedge funds and all these finance people and, and that are that are governing our economic system right now what these people did in cahoots with the banks they formed companies that went on wall street that bought cheap property cheap property and they became the largest landlords in the united states and canada as well right so there's funds on wall street that own like tens of thousands of homes right and they don't care about them right so it really depends where you live where your rent money is going is your rent money going to wall street uh it, it's it's a funny thing a vc right uh but i agree people need to take control of 
their own country's finances. You can't give it to the technocrats and the and hedge funds. They're gonna they're gonna loot the country, and they are right. It's like two thousand one Space Odyssey with the Clavia Space Ch -ch -ch. Ripper only missing one live session uh, since being on Twitch. Uh, you have been, you have to be around 100 live streams by now, right? Right, uh, more than 100, uh, a ripper, and to only miss one. Fantastic, fantastic. Doctor P, how are you doing? Blessings, blessing, and anger. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. That online purchase tax really blows in Seattle. 10 percent. Yeah, I had some people to buy in Washington. I forget what it was. It was anywhere between 10 to six and a half, six and a half, or 11 percent, or something. Um, you guys, I'm going to scroll down a little bit just to catch. Oh, no, it's not that bad. Okay, awesome. I'm going to read these things. Full year of Chicho's dreams. Wow. And anger. Have you? Is it 12, 12 months now? <laughs> so, Dragon. Not one for per, um, personality calls, but if we can declare Chichonians as a religion. <laughs> Hilarious. We'll get tax breaks, right? A religion to dodge taxes. We should do it. We'll follow Robert Anton Wilson's footsteps, right? The truth is for suckers, Johnny boy. Ch -ch -ch. Corporate bailouts are nothing but theft. Simple as that. Just like the bailouts that politicians want to give to airlines and cru uh, cruises and everybody else, right? Who was it? It was insane. Um, the Harvard, Harvard with a $40 billion endowment and stuff like this. One of the uh, most stable, like, power hungry institutions in the United States lined up to get money from the government. And there was so much backlash about it. They had to say, okay, we're not going to take millions of dollars from the government as a bailout. What kind of a scam is this? Right? I have a house in another state. I rent out. I couldn't sell since, uh, 2009. Uh, I still pay mortgage on that. So if renters go on strike, I'm Yeah. Uh, Knights of old comic. I agree. There are landlords that are legitimately like when you're making money as an individual. And we've talked about this. We talked about this in our personal finance videos and whatnot, right? If you plan on being financially uh, independent, right, to live your life as you wish, just by your salary coming in, you're dreaming, okay? Because based on our current economic system if you want to become financially independent you can't just rely on the salary you make you have to make investments and people make investments in different things buying a second property to rent out is a legit thing to do right buying comic books is a legit thing to do buying collectibles is a legit thing to do buying art is a legit thing to do right C opening up a, a business is a legit thing to do buying things and refurbishing and selling them is a legit thing to do right everybody has their own thing they need to do right so you have to be careful when a lot of people say landlords are this or renters are this or these people are this or these people are this we're all in the same boat the only people that aren't in the same boat as individual human beings is wall street and the like okay and obviously the politicians that have been paid out uh, by wall street they're basically representing wall street right and not representing the citizenry so people have to really pay attention to what who they're hurting with their actions right because we're all allies okay uh, I'm just gonna scroll. Chat kicked me up again, uh, which is unfortunate. There we go. Laugh aloud. You have pro you have property. That's something at least. Uh, anti cage. The odds are Knights of Old Comic doesn't own that property. His name is on that property, but a bank owns that property. And when Knights of Old Comic, if he can't pay rent for three months the bank takes that away and that's one of the scams they pulled in 2008 right they came in and the, fi the financial advisors told people not to pay and stuff like this and uh the robo signing stuff with bank of america dem demolishing homes and stuff banks and cahoots with wall street they created all these reasons they bought tens of thousands of houses right it's not even thousands tens of thousands of apartments homes and stuff like this right the banks own it 
most people that say they own how they own a home now that property values the odds are of going down if they haven't already right let's say you bought a property for a million dollars right let's say you have two hundred thousand dollars equity in that property that means you owe eight hundred thousand dollars to the bank when that property drops below eight uh, eight hundred thousand dollars you got zero equity in that house nothing the only thing you got in there is time right now what are you going to do if it drops below that are you going to be paying a mortgage more than what the property is worth in the hopes of it going up people who bought at the peak of the housing market in the 1980s had to wait some of them had to wait 30 years to get their money back right that's the fallacy people have when they get caught up in the real estate market they assume that real estate prices always go up not true not true look at detroit right look at countless other cities and townships and towns and counties and provinces housing prices don't go one direction nothing goes one direction okay nice just started you won f here in ontario we also have an online purchase tax as far as i know people should pay taxes not business entities people should pay taxes not business entities mm, i'm not sure what you mean jib people should pay taxes not business entities what does that mean uh, vc i was trying to ask more more asking if it's okay if people are evicted if they lose their job and can't pay the rent for their apartment i'm lucky because i have a pretty good job right now but what if me and my roommate and the rest of our building lost our job here's the kicker vc right now because of the pandemic thing the government told people you can't go to work so the government has to flip the bill for this right because the government is telling people not to work not to go out to stay away from people right so government has to pick up the tab but the government didn't pick up the tab the government gave the money to wall street right so right now it's a different situation okay but if you're renting a place and you can't pay rent you have to appreciate that the landlord has to pay the bank they all, they have a mortgage if you don't pay your rent and the landlord doesn't pay the mortgage the bank comes takes the house away from the landowner and kicks you out so you lose the landowner loses the bank wins right so you have to consider the situation what's going on there should be a tax cap for thirty thousand dollars in taxes per individual so maximum someone can should pay taxes is thirty thousand dollars is that what you mean jib hey man marmol the man i'm gonna call you the man hey the man how are you doing you're giving me the heebie-jeebies am i brother man you scare easy you scare easy lights of all corporations trump made all that prove me wrong i have i don't know what that is uh ripper chicho as Chicho as chichonians we don't drink the kool-aid as those simple minor folk did in the in the 70s but rather was as intelligent calm and artistic follows chicho thanks ripper we try we try man i'm richer now since trump became president are you are you are you on wall street are you a mercenary i hope you're not one of the mercenaries that try to get into venezuela you might you might you might be watching a live stream from from a little dungeon the banks own trump the banks own trump right the banks have by the way the banks have owned trump always okay if you follow trump in the 90s he almost went bankrupt he couldn't he couldn't find a bank that would lend them money he was begging right and then they some of the banks found out that he owed them so much money if he if he declared bankruptcy they'd go down the toilet so they got together and they bought his name and they said okay you're our boy now right and he is he's just a puppet he owes money to bank due to his failed business yeah for sure great job tonight. good job tonight mods yeah I, see, I saw some people getting knocked awesome he has more successful ones than papa no he doesn't no a uh, jib i i don't think you understand our current economic system why should profit not be taxed uh what profit uh fast car oh i think you're talking to the person that says 30 yeah it's you know what what we need to do is right now the government 
is a monopoly for corporations. That's what they're doing, right? The United States is a bunch of monopolies, corporate monopolies that control every aspect of everybody's lives. That's why we need to decentralize everything, right? He's a billionaire now. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Money that people need to for their lives be taxed, but not profit. Ch -ch -ch. I agree, Fascar. Right? Why is payroll taxed? Right? When you buy, you get your payroll gets taxed, and then when you go buy something, you get taxed. You make uh, capital gains, you get taxed. Like, right? There's got to be some kind of place where you don't have to hire an accountant that knows how to navigate the tax system because they wrote the tax system for you to be able to retain some of the money you've made right being a landlord is a lot of work uh knights of old comic i agree i have family and friends that are landlords right and i personally have no desire like to become a landlord right our family was in the real estate business for 30 years right i've helped build small apartments like three-story apartments as well as single family homes okay that's what my background is that's my my first job was on a construction site 13 years old working on building a house for the family right not for us just to live in but as a as a developer okay so i know the housing market pretty well right it's it's a dog's life if you you have a you're a landlord and you have to maintain a property and you get bad tenants man bad tenants can cost a landlord an incredible they could bankrupt landlords okay so people have to be careful um okay i got knocked up so i'm scrolling all the way down gang i'm all the way down graham thank you very much there seems to be um, people that are a little bit, a uh, uh, little bit uh, uneducated uh, that are trying to, uh, instead of learn about what's happening in the world and what they'll have to deal with, they're here trying to do a little trolling action. They don't realize uh, there's some swords out, right? Uh, so Graham, thank you very much for taking care of business. Uh, Saucy Rossi, since COVID, there has been $6 trillion spent to prop up an economy that isn't working. And uh, Saucy Rossi, you got more here, but they're not propping up the economy. They're propping up the stock market, their corporations. They just gave trillions of dollars to the monopoly powers in Wall Street to make sure they have enough money for them to last through the chaos that is about to come and to make sure they have enough money to buy out all the little guys that are about to go bankrupt, right? That's what's going on right now. These $6 trillion that have gone to Wall Street, it's not to prop up the economy. The economy is already done, okay? This, what we're about to see is about to unfold in the next two, three, four, five years, right? 70,000 plus deaths in the US. The Afghan war has cost a bit over a trillion dollars and 2,000 Americans have died. I'm sure 10 times that in civil. For sure, Saucy Rossi. I've looked at the numbers in Afghanistan. It's horrendous, right? And the Afghan war, Afghan-Iraq war, uh, report came out uh, uh, last year, I believe in 2019 came out, that said the Iraq war has cost the United States in the ballpark of around $6 trillion, I believe. And it, you know, the a Wall Street Journal of all places released the Afghan files saying that every administration, the Bush administration, the Obama administration, the Trump administration, they've all known that the Afghan war was lost from the get go. But they still spent trillions of dollars creating this delusion, illusion, illusion, <laughs> right? To tr telling the American citizens that everything is going okay, they're about to win, they're about to win, they're about to win, right? It's a complete scam. Yeah, Trump is a puppet. So was Obama. Obama was a puppet too. So was Bush, right? Graham Chicho. Maybe I'm trigger happy, but I'm just timing them out if uh, someone else wants to ban them. Okay, awesome, Graham. If you're timing them out, you're timing them out. And by the way, if you're here legit and you're accidentally being timed out, okay? straight up 
right now it's a little bit chaotic in the world we a couple of streams ago we got burned by a couple of trolls right doing a math stream of all places right they they polluted a math stream and people when they when they when they mess around with mathematics i don't like that right it shows how stupid they are okay it shows that they want to propagate their stupidity right and their hate so we're a little trigger happy right now because there's serious discussion going on there's a lot of people are are hurt right now if you think there's a lot of people that are hurt right now because of what's going on in the economy and stuff like this wait until you see what's about to happen in the next two to five years it's going to be more serious than this okay be prepared everyone timing out is fine unless they come back and if they come back i hope you know if you've been timed out if you come back really listen to what's going on here okay really we're sharing the stuff with love uh, sometimes it's a little hard love right saucy rossi yes i meant stock market when i said economy because every major uh company's stock should technically be worth cents on a dollar saucy rossi i couldn't agree more boeing unbelievable right they wouldn't even need the money to benefit from that crisis that trump created uh which crisis that trump created trump is just a puppet trump didn't do trump didn't do anything He's just saying what he's been told to say, right? Do you feel that the employees' wages are not fair? Employees, who's in, which employees, Jib? Knights of Old Kong, Chicho, can you talk a little bit about how easy it is to make money if you have money and how the gap between financially self-made and born into wealth is getting bigger and bigger? It's just compound interest, really, right? For example, take me and you right me here you guys there let's say we're making on average we're gonna highball it let's say we're making on average fifty thousand dollars right now our expenses in, in where i am rent is ridiculously high right so let's say according to economists and stuff like this they say a third of your income should be rent a third should be food and a third should be entertainment savings and stuff like that i don't know where they came up came up with these numbers i'm pretty sure those are wall street people saying oh yeah third of your rent third of your income should be rent right if your average joe blow right so let's assume this let's assume from fifty thousand dollars if you're renting if you're family or something like this let's say twenty thousand dollars goes to rent right that's less than two thousand dollars a month You'd be paying rent for let's say two bedroom or three bedroom house if you're a family you have kids and stuff like this right even an individual right now it costs more than twenty thousand dollars for us for me and my partner to live in a two bedroom complex of a of a house in a place right it's expensive right but let's assume twenty thousand dollars for rent let's assume ten thousand dollars for food okay let's assume you spent five thousand dollars on entertainment right now that's thirty five thousand dollars that means you got fifteen thousand dollars for transportation for emergency fund that you should definitely put aside for debt you might be carrying student loans and stuff like this so let's assume you have fifteen thousand dollars out of fifty thousand dollars of disposable money now let's assume one of us makes a hundred thousand dollars and they live the same lifestyle as the rest of us that have fifteen thousand dollars disposable money if they have the same expenses that means they have sixty five thousand dollars of disposable money right so do the percent difference okay fifty thousand dollars worth of versus a hundred thousand dollars that's double right so they're making double what everybody else is making here on average right however they don't have twice as much disposable income as we do right they have sixty five thousand dollars we have fifteen thousand dollars right so let's go sixty thousand dollars if you want right maybe they can spend an extra five thousand dollars in entertainment they have four times more disposable income than we do they make twice as much money but they have four times more disposable income now take that same calculation compare 
someone fifty thousand dollars to a million dollars to ten million dollars to a billion dollars right is that a good enough comparison because when it comes to that when it comes to competing to buying property buying art investing somewhere buying stocks right getting good health care right if you have to line up in a queue and it's private and you need to pay somebody to save your life you got fifteen thousand dollars disposable money very rich person has an unlimited amount compared to you if their expenses now keep this in mind someone that's making a million or two million or hundred million their expenses are a lot higher right but how much higher does it go is it consuming thirty five thousand dollars out of fifty is it consuming seventy percent of their income right someone making a hundred thousand dollars is their expense hundred million dollars is their expenses seventy million dollars right if it is they're they're how in the world did they acquire hundred million dollars right because they're not doing their finances properly the the odds are their expenses are maybe a couple of million two three four five million out of a hundred million that's five percent of their income not 70 percent of their income that's the game at play here right and then add to that compound interest exponential growth and differential accumulation from jonathan nitsans in the limit not even in the limit within five years ten years you're bankrupt they got everything which is basically name of the game for wall street okay i hope that's clear uh it's just simple mathematics really uh cinder fan 35 how are you doing chicho here in finland there's a fear going on that due to rich people being in control politician political situation they will take any safety income from poor so that the rich don't need to pay for economy recovering that is ahead uh cinder fan 35 that is exactly what's going to happen okay that is exactly what's going to happen austerity going to kick in extra taxes on payrolls on general general me and you population okay because these governments are going to go after taxes are going to go after easy money low-hanging fruit right so what you're saying is exactly what's going to happen in the western world okay just increase minimum wage why not just increase minimum wage you could where for what jobs I, I don't know a jib these general things going why not do this why not do this those are just talking points right the afghan war and the mujahideen was a straight up weapons testing program run by the cia scam boy it, it was a lot of other things it was pipelines it was unical it was control of eurasia it was resources it was an industrial military complex it was hegemony there was a lot of things at play the minimum wage should be increased but trump doesn't want to do that a uh, fast car it's not just trump it, it it's not just trump i i mean i say it as well i say trump i say obama i say bush and stuff like this but it, it must be clear to all of us now that it's a one-party system they're the technocrat cross they're the oligarchs the they're the, they're the corporation it's wall street that runs the united states of america and by proxy canada and europe right cheryl sherry sherry i gotta read it properly sherry i still think the afghan war was about preventing delaying chinese belt and road project could be could be but i don't think the united states was too worried about that at the time they were they did want to destabilize the region they did want to get a foothold in eurasia there's no doubt about it right it was about control of eurasia as brzezinski wrote in the grand uh chessboard right uh it was about eurasia and containing china but i don't think it was thought about to be on this level i don't think they realized how fast china was going to rise and for this long growth of this much right chicho why is henry kissinger still alive dude beats me is there a liqueur or something you can give no dude i'm not into taking anybody's lives right employees wages from large corporations employees wait jib i have no idea what your sentences are saying anti-cage i mean in european that the u.s doesn't have paid sick leave for example oh my god that's why you're 
right? No universal health care. That's why you are universal basic income. We don't have that either, but it's smart if we think about humans as one. I mean, you should at least catch up on two. Da, 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 da. Universal UBI has, has its own problems. It'll be under the technocrats and it'll be one way ticket to enslavement absolute poverty for a for a country okay if you don't mind me asking where are you located you know, i'm in canada west coast of canada hippo hippocritus i'm gonna scroll down gang i've gone all the way down to the bottom okay just so i can stay up with the with the chat if there's anything that i miss please let me know Okay, Chicho, can I give you give a recommendation that people can do to earn money if they have a bit above average computer skills and writing ability? Uh, what is a saucy Rossi? For sure, you can definitely share. By the way, I got ginger tea and ginger and mint tea, uh, spearmint tea, spearmint tea that we dried and ginger obviously bought. It's very nice. And I got myself some apples. We've been eating too much pie lately. Time to eat something a little bit healthier. All right. Very little better than ginger tea and apples, my man. Smith, couldn't agree more. Just good for the body, right? Very delicious. And it's it, it's even that much better when you picked the spearmint and the mint yourself and dried it yourself, right? Like, if you saw the videos we put out last year, I went through a major spearmint and mint drying. Um, thank you very much for taking care of business, Graham. Learning how to write Alexa skills. Do your research, everyone. But it is possible to learn how to do it. And if you have creative ideas, you can make money annually. Okay. It all depends how long it takes, right? Is the time you put in worth it? And also you have to consider, is this something you're going to love? Or is this going to introduce stress into your life, right? Because one of the first things that we mentioned this from the get go first video we put out in personal finance, health matters, the most important thing, investment you can make in your life, right? is make sure you're healthy and maintain your connections with your family and stuff have a support system right and invest in yourself right acquire skills as saucy rossi as you're mentioning acquire skills very important they come in handy in the future tiger hi chicho glad to catch you live again do you think that covid 19 pandemic will push the us into a universal health healthcare system i'm from the uk and it's crazy to me they don't have it um it could possibly the kicker is right now the united states it's governed by monopolies and monopolies are hard to break unless something dramatic takes place right and right now the choice is between dumb and dumber in the united states it's a one-party system right who, who do you want representing the representing wall street do you want trump or do you want biden i i want neither and i will not vote for either of them if i was an american citizen right so one of them is going to win from all indications until unless something dramatic takes place right and they all represent wall street and wall street governs the united states of america so something dramatic has to happen for universal health care to roll out in the united states i don't think it's going to happen anytime soon okay dark unsweetened chocolate almonds and single malt scotch here Ooh, catholic traditionalist nice that's like dinner right saucy rossi for example it takes 20 hours to learn and once you find the form formula it takes a few hours to create a skill uh, I think the time required that's an average if it's average it's okay I guess but it all depends what your income could be right but do people really want to do that if you do look into online stuff the other choice is 
You could spend time on something you love and generate money that way, right? Now, people could love doing this thing online, but if they're doing it, it's, the odds are it's mainly just because of money, right? But if you like doing handiwork and stuff like this, there's nothing wrong with buying used materials and refurbishing them and selling them. There's very good money to be had that way. And you also pick up a hobby, you pick up skills, and it's a creative outlet, right? Basically, the USA is, is just going to let uh, tons, tons of people die and try to ignore it. And there's nothing any of us can do except continue to take it. Graham, I think there's a lot people can do, Graham. Okay, I'm not as negative uh, on the whole situation as I may appear to be. Uh, I hope it's it's clear that I'm pretty positive on how things are going to roll out. Uh, I hope so. Okay, VC, the U.S. will only adopt a universal health care system if somehow the politicians in the Congress ignore their big pharma donations and act with a conscience, which is not going to happen because majority of people in congress don't have a conscience right as was indicated when they were selling their stocks before they told the american population that oh well, something serious going on right and those were the some of the good guys they weren't even the main players right just imagine what some of the main players were doing wow 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 finding something you can do to learn earn uh passive income helps immensely immensely uh saucy rossi i agree immensely g carnos carnos hey thanks for laying down the facts and clearing clearly explaining the one-party system yeah it's a one-party system all right what are your top uh book non-textbook recommendations uh if you go to my about page very nice if you go to my about page I have a list of books that I recommend, right? Uh, I, I have a list of anime that I recommend, movies that I recommend, documentaries that I recommend, lectures that I recommend, uh, sources of news that I recommend. I don't follow all of those anymore, but there's still some on the on there. Some list of teachers that I've had over the years that I recommend people, you know, consume their content. I am very negative about it. I'm just lucky they aren't trying to force the schools uh schools to open yeah they won't this year germany is i believe germany has already opened up the schools catholic traditionalist chicho i agree i think people generally have a lot more power to determine the course of their lives than they think 100 percent agree catholic traditionalist um, we can we can decide to participate in any system right as long as we haven't hit their radar and they're not after us right so if you if you understand how the game is played then you can decide not to play that game but if you're fooled into committing your life committing your savings committing your family committing your future to a game that you do not understand and you're locked in then you're a slave be aware of the choices that you are making right that is key essential crucial okay that's why i tell people to slow down slow down do you really want to participate in that system what is that system where is that lead what's what's the little you know fine points way down at the bottom of the contract that you're about to sign right book recommendations from a business guy myself rich dad poor dad and start with the why I've heard that uh, as well. Rich, rich dad, poor dad. Schools don't earn profits, and the administration is anti-expert. Schools don't earn profits. Tardy. Universities are very profitable. It's a pure. It's just total scam, right? They got they got the government to guarantee loans. Dude, can I can I get the government to guarantee loans that I give out to anybody, right? I'll give you I'll give you a loan to come to the Chicho school to learn how to read comic books okay and when you're finished my course which is gonna cost you ten thousand dollars for a year 
right? Then you'll be able to read comic books and write reviews and make money, right? And we'll get the government to guarantee that school fee, right? So you can get a loan. It's going to cost you nothing, right? Nothing. You can get a loan for $10,000, come to my school, right? And the government will give it to you. You know, I'll give it to you. I'll come and, come and sign up. You get a $10,000 loan from the government to, and you don't have to even pay interest for that year that you're in, right? And when you graduate, I'm going to give you a little piece of paper. And for six months, you won't even have to pay interest, right? And then after that, the interest is very little and you can pay it off as you write reviews for comic books, right? And now you got a brand new career, right? That's, that's the scam at play with universities. They guarantee a loan for you to go to school to learn some kind of basket weaving program that's going to cost you, f take you four years to learn, right? It's going to put you in debt for $100,000, $100, $150,000, $50,000, right? And when you graduate, there is no jobs and you can't declare bankruptcy because the government guaranteed your loan, right? And the university has already already spent that money, man. They bought some Picassos. They put it together with a whole bunch of other people, suckers like you, that were willing to give them $100,000 to get a degree in basket weaving. Because when you graduated, they told you you could weave a lot of baskets, artistic baskets, and make a lot of money and pay back your loan real fast, right? They told that to lawyers, accountants, everybody right how many of those jobs are going to be to, are going to be able to service that debt be aware how much debt you're picking up and what kind of debt that is knights of old comic chicho i'm referring more about the larger amount of opportunities with one uh, million etc to invest you can buy many properties yeah for sure okay so if that's what you're talking about a uh, nice old comment so i'm going to finish reading your comment but basically you're talking about leveraging the million dollars right and taking out debt relative to that and then when you buy property you can take out more debt on that property so it's just a domino effect there's so many ways to scam is like make make you appear more than what you are right so i'm going to read your comment again uh, knights of old comic i'm referring more uh, referring more about the larger amount of opportunities with 1 million etc to invest you can buy more properties and rebuild and resell for small profits because you're doing 10 at once like how corporations beat out the small bookstores because selling millions for tiny profit adds up something the small guys can't do knights of old comic yeah and this model is also about mom and pop shops corner mom and pop shops and independent electronic store um, outlets and stuff like that a lot of them went bankrupt when amazon came in, into the game right um, but it goes a little bit deeper than this because a lot of the funds right now and this happened in the past as well a lot of these corporations go out there and go leveraged to the tilt right they're they're leveraged to the max and all of a sudden the economy goes belly up right and now let's say 10 percent of their tenants can't pay rent right 20 percent of their tenants can't pay rent and they still have to service that that property right so what happens slowly is even large corporations people with lots of money can get into a debt spiral if they're over leveraged so it's it's really a matter of how you play the game the major players that are billionaires and stuff like that they don't really have to worry about that to a certain degree unless they're ridiculously stupid okay i researched stocks on wall street for my 401 lubble i'm gonna skip the ones that are conversations between each other gang i went on your your about page and i loved uh, walter lewin too did you like any of his other courses um i have to look at which one that is i'm really bad with names and some of the stuff that i recommended very nice some of that stuff is stuff that i looked at 18 years ago uh, 20 years ago 15 years ago right 
I created that about page. I haven't updated it for a long time. I created that about page in 2005, 2006, 2007. Okay. And last time I updated it, I think it was added stuff to the list was 2008 or 2009. So that's over 10 years ago. I would have to look at the lecture to, to know which one that is. Okay. I'm really bad with names. My apologies, by the way. I read that lots of people die without ever paying off their student loans in the US. Yeah. Can't remember the percent. Do you think only some degrees should be supported by uh, uh, guaranteed loans? I don't think. I th here's my take on universities, right? If the university has a program and they're charging you a ton of money, right, to register in that course and get that degree, and if you don't get a job, the university, if you can't pay back that loan, the university should have to flip the bill for that. They gave you an education. They gave you a piece of paper that said, hey, you're certified in doing this. You should be able to go get a job. And you weren't able to get a job. They made a promise. They took four years out of your life, right? Then why should you carry that debt, right? You made a stupid decision if you got your degree in something that doesn't give you a job, for sure. But the only reason you would have made that stupid decision is because you were guaranteed the loan. It was easy to get the loan. Who made that possible? The government made that possible. Okay. So uh, certain degrees, it really depends. It really depends. Sure, there are certain degrees that going into debt for are okay to do right like i went into debt to get my degree right geophysics with a math minor i had no doubt that i could get a job like really i had no doubt not because of just a degree but because of my work ethic i've worked in construction since i was 13 years old once you work in construction uh for an extended period of time you probably built up a very good work ethic really if it was my choice to hire someone right someone came up to me I have a job opening let's say I had a job opening if I had a choice between hiring someone that's been in the construction field for 10 15 20 years and someone that's just been an academic for five or ten years I wouldn't even think twice I would hire the person that worked construction for 10 years 15 years there's no doubt about it even though on paper this guy looks better the 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 guy who's been academic that work ethic doesn't exist in the real world. That's an academic work ethic, right? So it really depends. It really depends. Given the fact that we are on the verge of a global recession, is there something worth investing in? We're more than a global re uh, recession. This is no longer a recession. We're about to kick into a depression in certain parts of the world. There's no doubt about it, okay? So is there something worth investing in? For sure. There are a lot of places that made a lot of money during the depression. Okay. Catholic traditionalist. When it comes to building a good life for me and for those I hold dear, I unashamedly do what I believe to be right, even if this is at odds with what I am told I should do by nameless, faceless folks up on the hill. I find it is often better in such cases to seek forgiveness than to seek permission and it it even and it even more often better to seek neither from those folks. Catholic traditionists, I agree with you. Don't look at Wall Street to decide if I got the gist of what you were saying. Wall Street and those in authority and power to decide where you should be and how you should live your life figure out what reduces the most amount of stress from your and your loved ones lives look into how you and your loved ones can remain as healthy as possible and as connected as possible within the community that's your first place you should be looking at to invest if you have excess funds then the next thing you need to do is do a fair bit of research to figure out where you're going to spend your money where you're going to park your money that is not going to disrupt what you've created already right so for example if you're investing in your health in your family in your community right and you're happy with that okay 
and you have a little bit of money on the side, you would have to be an idiot to invest in Walmart because Walmart goes against what you just built, right? Think about the consequences of your actions and where you're putting your funds, your energy, your resources in, right? There are people that I know that are extremely amazing, good people. They mean well in the world, right? And all the excess money that they have, they put into Wall Street. If they're close to me, I call them for what they are. Complete hypocrites and idiots, right? VC, the bank where I keep all my income and savings are encouraging me to invest through them. Should I attempt to invest through them and make money or just keep the money in my account? VC, there, there's a fallacy in your statement here, right? In your second sentence, you're saying, should I attempt to invest through them and make money? How do you know you're going to make money if you invest through them, right? Do they guarantee it? Do they, do they say, we guarantee that you will get... 5% returns per year for the rest of your life and you will never lose your money. They no bank is going to tell you this, right? So first thing you have to do is and banks there's whole different types of instruments that banks will try to sell you. And if you don't, you know, if you don't qualify as a accredited investor and stuff like this, like there there are funds out there that have criteria one of the criteria is you have to have one million dollars of liquid funds that you can park with them right not one million dollars worth right it's not that you're worth a million dollars you have to have liquid liquid one million dollars before they will allow you to invest with them right now if you're joe blow you don't have a million dollars to invest with these funds then you're gonna have to go with the lower end funds right now you tell me do you think the people managing the fund that has millionaires investing with them is that on the same caliber as the person who has fun who's managing a fund that has people investing with them that are in the thousands of dollars i'm willing to bet the person that performs better is kicked up to manage the funds of people who have larger assets right so you really have to think about what the bank is trying to sell you okay there's a lot of garbage that the banks are going to try to dump on people right now okay the what do you call it the i forget the names of the t different types of people that these they refer to them right great point i second that suggestion graham what did graham say your local community your local community invest in your local community uh, where are you from chicho i'm in canada yes the schools uh, as laborers okay i'm gonna uh, read the stuff that's directed towards me how much cash is needed to generate a hundred thousand dollars a year from interest alone like, like dividends and stuff oh man just do the reverse calculation you want a hundred thousand dollars dividend of five percent right if you're doing well Let's say you get yield of 5%, right? So 5% of what is equal to $100,000? Divide $100,000 by 5%, right? What is that, 5 million? Five, no, oh, I gotta do the card. Here, I'll do it. Doop, 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 doop. Oops, I want a million, oops. Oh, I should've just done it anyway. Ch -ch. Divided by 0 0.05. You need two million dollars invested giving you a yield of oh, i should have been able to do that in my head what a dangling all right uh you you need two million dollars somewhere okay to give you a yield of five percent to get a hundred thousand dollars out right now that hundred thousand dollars is going to be taxed depending on where you are right i think in canada is 25 percent on uh, what do you call it those kinds of uh investments coming in right i'm not sure what it is in the united states okay crunkster i invested into pornhub and i really <laughs> that was funny in the end the only thing that is uh 
that is going to matter is the people around you invest in your local community community gardens rec centers after school clubs help your neighbors yeah and i'll give you an example for example like graham is saying basically one of the best places you should invest in is your community and i 100 percent agree like for example right now in the city that i'm living in right now in victoria canada british columbia there's a lot of homeless here okay and a lot of homeless that have come from the other provinces one of the reasons is this most moderate weather here right it doesn't rain as much as vancouver so there's certain weather elements involved and whatnot right so right now because of COVID, things went into lockdown right so people in canada who you know who who had everything going they had a job and stuff like they filled out a form and they got they're getting two thousand dollars a month coverage from the government right so those people middle class let's call them middle class that were that qualified for this are getting two thousand dollars a month until lockdown is lifted right which is a hell of a lot more in the united states united states people are getting shafted hard by the way okay so canadians middle class could fill out the form if they weren't allowed to go to their jobs to get two thousand dollars a month that should pay your rent and your expenses and you just chill at home right now, some of those people who have bought homes and they have mortgages and stuff like this, they're at home, they're seeing what's going on, and they're seeing the activity during the day. And in my area, there's a lot of homeless around. Now, the homeless that aren't on the books, everything's cash for them. One of the main sources of income for the homeless was collecting bottles and returning bottles. The other main source of income was panhandling, right? Guess what? with the lockdown with the quarantine with the suggested suggestion of not going out panhandling doesn't get them anything because there's nobody around and the bottle depot places where you could return bottles are all closed i've when i've gone on walks i've seen m like mounds of bottles in parks where a homeless person has been collecting the bottles but he can't return them right so no money from the bottles either right so no money from panhandling no money from the bottles no money from the government right they don't get two thousand dollars they don't have a residence right they weren't filing taxes they don't get two thousand dollars right and now what's happening is those people who were who are getting two thousand dollars they're like going hey the homeless are breaking in here right our lives are not as good as we thought they were our property values are going to come down because there's lots of homeless around here so our homes are now the equity we have in the homes is not as much as we had in the past before this pandemic hit right oh what's going on well those people didn't invest in the community they allowed the homeless situation to rise up to a level that something like this that disrupts the ridiculous economic system that we have right now to lift the veil right all of a sudden they're going oh wow wait a second my home isn't really worth a million dollars it's worth eight hundred thousand dollars but i put two hundred thousand dollars in there but that means it's only worth eight hundred thousand so all these years that i worked and the down payment that i made that just blew up it, it, it is it's, it's as if i didn't do that at all and my car's being broken into and i look out my window there's people camped out across the street across the park from me, and there's a mound of bottles empty bottles wait a second i thought this was supposed to be a middle class neighborhood guess what they didn't invest in their community okay if we invest in our communities if we make sure the supply chain is solid the we have food security we have people institutions right organizations that deal with mental health with trauma we have well-funded schools that are educating the children right if we have community centers where there is readings where people can go take like for example one of the things with community centers guess what community centers are closed there are homeless people that were using community centers to take showers there are people that used to live in their homes this is my area very like it's top of the pyramid if you compare it to the world right people living in their homes and going to work living in their campers and going to work right because they can't afford the rent they can't afford property that were using community centers to take showers right 
The community centers are closed. Ah, uh, guess what? They can't go take showers, clean up to go to work, right? All of this is ridiculously important. So when people say they have excess money, they want to invest it somewhere, where do you live? Is your community on the borderline of completely collapsing? Do you like it there? Do you think you want to spend a lot of time there? Then you should be investing in that community. That's the best place you can invest your funds in, right? Stabilize it. Make sure that if something like this happens, all of a sudden you don't have homeless people breaking into your cars and you can't go outside and play, right? In Scotland, if you're a Scottish National University, is free for under 25, which is the way it should be, really. An educated population is extremely important. Very nice. Ch -ch -ch. Why not cover unemployed uh, graduates with UBI and let schools be creative um, in how they educate and not just focus on practical education? I agree that we don't. It, the education system shouldn't just be geared towards educating people that can get jobs, right? That's not what I meant personally. And I agree with uh, Very Nice and Graham as well that education should be across the board, right? But it should be free, okay? Really, some people are going to say, oh, it shouldn't be free, blah, 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 blah. No, education should be free. Once, once a population, once a country, a nation lifts up the standard of intelligence in your communities that means it's safer right it's healthier there's less crime there's more genuine entrepreneurship there's collaboration right i'm in full support of educating the whole country should I work full time for $2,500 a month or cash in on CERB for 2000 to do nothing? Is that what it's called? Nuclear uh, Nedla? It all, it really depends. Here's the kicker, right? So some people, here's one question that people have been asking, right? When people, I know people is going through their thoughts, right? Let's assume you live in a country where that's the choice you have. Should you work, work full time for two thousand five hundred dollars? And remember, you might get taxed on that, but let's assume you're going to bring that home, right? So we're not including taxes and whatnot. Should you work for two thousand five hundred dollars, okay, full time, or should you take government handout for two thousand dollars a month, right? Now, this is what you need to ask yourself: Is that full time job longer term than the government handout for two thousand dollars? And if when the government handout for two thousand dollars runs out, are you going to be able to get that same job back for two thousand five hundred dollars? Right. So you can't just think about this month, the next two months, the next three months, the next four months. This two thousand dollars handout that the government is giving out is not going to last two years. Right. It's going to last two, three, four, five, six months max right after six months when you don't get that two thousand dollars are you going to be able to get a job that pays you twenty five hundred dollars a month right if the answer is no then hold on to that job right if you like that job if you like the people you work with right but if you don't like that and you're looking for an out you're saying okay this is killing me then sure Take the government hound up for $2,000, but be aware that $2,000 is going to end. If you're taking that $2,000, the handout that the government's given you, don't sit on your ass and consume marathon shows and spend the money and laugh your ass off and say, haha, I'm getting free money. Because after six months, you're going to have to find a job. You're going to have to pay your bills right if you took to that two thousand dollars and you didn't think about what's going to happen when this thing you know when the dust starts selling settling on what's taking place right now if you didn't take this two thousand dollars to retrain yourself to make sure that you have 
I don't want to say, uh, what do you call it? Uh, people will want to hire you, but you've acquired skills that you can sell to people, right? If you haven't done that, re-educated yourself, retrained yourself, then man, you're in deep trouble. You're in deep trouble. Okay. Do you have any advice for surviving a potentially global depression? Uh, community. The only way we get to survive a depression, right, is if we're well connected within our communities. Okay. You also have to have a certain amount of liquid assets or funds cash is king right and you also have to have this is something that we've talked about in the personal finance videos and playlists and stuff like this right you have to have multiple sources of revenue okay this is something i really emphasized when we started creating the personal finance videos um two years ago i guess i think we started making that in 2018 i started creating that by the way because i could see this what was coming just like 2008 financial crafts, I started writing about the financial crafts in 2006. 2006, I was going pretty hardcore saying, hey, listen, something's about to come. Be warned, be aware. So we started doing a personal finance. I mentioned health, community, acquire assets, experience is important, and decentralize. Have multiple sources of revenue. That means right now, and this goes to all of you, right now, if you're main source of income is from one location really start thinking about that and try to make sure you divest you decentralize right if you only have one client that you're working for and that's your main source of revenue you might be in trouble okay start finding one two three different sources of revenue at least and ideally you want to make sure that is distributed evenly across the board you could have one that's a lot more than the others within reason but make sure the other ones cover your expenses if that source of revenue is cut you we need to decentralize decentralize everything if you can everything okay Catholic traditionalist, if we truly want to break free from centralized authority, then relying on such authority to administer you a UBI program is problematic. Big time, I 100% agree with Catholic traditionalist. UBI is a fast track to solidifying a depression, enslaving people, really, right? Like it's gonna create mass poverty mass poverty and it's going to centralize power even further ubi is not the solution okay it definitely is not the solution it is actually a problem nice beard thanks crush brain is it, is your voice always so soothing or do you change it for asmr um i don't know i've slowly I'd, here's one thing i heard about bob ross right bob ross used to be um drill sergeant right now i don't think this is folklore i think this is legit bob ross used to be a drill sergeant and he used to yell at people and stuff like this and he had health issues and whatnot right and then he started making painting videos relaxing painting videos and i believe what he said i think i watched this during the documentary i read it or something like this and he basically said when he he realized that his life was totally destructive and he didn't want to yell anymore right so he eliminated that from his life right for me this is the way i communicate right when i teach mathematics this is the tone that i use to teach math right one of the reasons to my students and what you see in my videos that's 100 percent legit like real that this is the tone this is the way I teach mathematics. Sometimes I'm a little bit harsher with certain students if they need a little shaking up, right? But I don't raise my voice on my students ever, ever. Like I can't remember once that I've ever done this in the last 20 years of teaching mathematics. And I've been pushed towards it. There's no doubt, right? 
but I've never raised my voice on my students. And I always try to make sure I'm conveying the information to the best of my abilities. Sometimes I stutter, sometimes I, I stumble, right? You can't be functioning at 100% all the time. But I think I've done enough live streams now in the last two years to um, to show you that this is pretty much what you see, <laughs> okay? A central authority is uh, very nice, says the Catholic Church. A central authority is uh, concerning, but it does work for some things. Ideally, something like a smart contract would would be even better for this. The problem with uh, UBI, by the way, very nice. The problem is because it's centralized controlled, right? They could put any criteria on there that they wanted to, right? For people to collect their money. For example, in New York, I believe, okay, for welfare system, they brought in all these criteria that people had to do to to collect welfare, and that took time away from them from educating themselves, retraining themselves, feeding their families, um, taking care of their families, educating their families, taking care of their communities, right? So they were spending time and energy and resources to doing things for the state to try to make sure that they could collect their welfare until they found a legitimate job. But because they couldn't retrain, re-educate, take care of the families and all of a sudden domestic problems start arising, then they could never do that to get a job. So they were stuck in a welfare spiral, right? So once you give that kind of power to centralized authority, they'll put in blockers, right? They'll put things in place to make sure people don't escape their control, right? Instead of their, they invested in Walmart instead of their community. Funny. I'm going to scroll down, gang. Um, I'm just going to read the stuff directed at uh, uh, me personally if there's a chicho on there da -da -da -da. Uh, nights of old comic chicho i live in a high cost of living area to have the career i want but being sole provider while supporting sm small child i cannot save to buy a house etc even though i'm making above average in the u.s i'm by far the poorest in my neighborhood and friends with two earners i get no money from COVID relief in the USA. Why can't they take cost of living into account? Uh, because they don't want to, a nice old comic. The only thing they took into account was Wall Street. That's it. They didn't take into account anything else, right? It's a scam. It's a scam. A nice old comic, by the way, you shouldn't be living in that situation, okay? Really. That's that must be introducing stress into your life, right? And that's gonna, in the long run, over an extended period of time, that's gonna create health problems, right? So I think, you know, take this with a grain of salt. Maybe start looking at where else you might be able to situate your family where the cost of living is not so high that is eating into when you say you're making above average but your cost of living is higher so you're not retaining above average money right if you are retaining above average money then you have to invest that money somewhere right so there's nothing wrong with moving to a place where the cost of living is lower but don't l look just for the cost of living also look into what the community infrastructure is there right is there support systems there and stuff like this uh, I've known people in your situation, right? And I've lived in your situation. Uh, I don't recommend staying in that kind of situation over an extended period of time. Uh, because when hiccups like this happen, it might take you out of the game. Okay. Ch -ch -ch. Graham, Chicho, I'm trying to decentralize, but I'm finding it hard to actually make any cash. Uh, Graham, they've made it extremely difficult theoretically i've got four sources of income but three of them are approximately uh zero i'm not sure what else i can do i feel like i'm working my ass off okay Graham, reduce the amount of work that you're doing because if you feel like you're working your ass off that's going to affect your health and that's going to interfere with your source of income right here's the other thing you have to ask yourself you have four sources of income well 
three of them are zero almost zero you say so you only have one source of income now that one source of income how long did it take you to reach a level where that thing would become income right and how long have you been spending time on those three that are no income but they could possibly be income so if you just started those three sources those three pipelines to start generating income don't expect them to start generating income right off the bat if they don't have a prospect right all three of them then look at all three and see which one you can work on right now to increase that to start generating a little bit of income once you're satisfied with that second source that is increasing right there's a certain amount of growth to it then look in look into putting time into the third source of income right don't try to do this all in one go do it in piecemeal really and really strategize think about what needs to be done next right you've been following my work long enough to know that i say i want to kick things up but i still go slow i still make certain moves that fit into the grand design that i'm doing that don't take away from the other things that i'm doing but complement everything else they work together so that's the way i approach it and i'm not in a rush right i'm in this the long game if anybody here is in a rush to make fast money make sure you have a little bit of disposable money and play whatever market you want where you could day trade or week trade or month trade right or buy things refurbished sell them okay he owes money to the bank due to his failed business i don't know what that is great job mods great job mods i saw some stuff getting zapped thank you very much money that people need to for their livelihood be taxed but not profit why should fast car why should money that people need for their livelihood be taxed but not profit here's the thing fast car check this out right i mentioned that i was in the our family was in the real estate business for a long time right three decades okay now this is the way the government worked now if you're in the real estate market if, or if you're running any type of business that's like a real estate market or you're in development or whatever it is if you're running a company there might be periods in your company's life where in five years you lose money in four of those years but you make money in one right now you have to have a very very good accountant to be able to take the profits made in that one year right to distribute it out within the five years right so you have to keep records and stuff like this right to be able to reduce the money you made the profits you made in that one year to distribute it out into the previous years because you have to stay alive for those five years right now there's a lot of people that run businesses right that don't understand this tax systems that we live under right the multinational corporations do that's why amazon microsoft all these people don't pay taxes right or pay bare minimum taxes joe blow running a coffee shop or i don't know development uh, they're a developer just starting out they don't realize that they need to play the game right if this person in that one year that made a lot of money profits doesn't realize that they need to distribute that within the last five years they're gonna get taxed up the yin yang right and all of a sudden let's say they made two hundred thousand dollars profit they're gonna get taxed at least fifty percent hundred thousand dollars now in the previous four years they might have written off twenty thousand dollars every year right if that happens if they don't understand the tax system their company is not going to last so it's not just as straight straightforward at, as why should money that people need for their livelihood be taxed but not profit some people need the profit in that one year to be able to pay for the expenses in the previous four years or in the next four years it's like it's like the biblical thing where uh who was it i forget what what it was where they had grains of rice great like they had the silos for food because there was going to be seven years of famine if you see the economy going a certain way 
where you have to make sure you stay alive for another five, seven years, you can cover your expenses. You need those profits to be distributed out for you to survive. And here's the kicker. If you made your profit the first year, right, and you didn't have anything previous to that to write it off, and in the next four years you lose money, you're bankrupt, right? Because that first year that you made a ton of profit, the government's going to come in and say, we want our share, right? So it's a, it's a game. It's a, it's, it's a horrendous game. It's a horrendous game. The banks own all politicians, Faskar, I agree. On both sides, I agree. And there is no both sides. There's only one side, right? I'm scrolling down, gang. Uh, that up Graham maybe I'm trigger happy but I'm just timing them out if someone else wants to okay awesome Graham or did this kick me up oh man it, it, the chat kicked me all the way up I think what happens is uh, if we get lots of chat and deletion stuff going it kicks me all the way down again da, 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 da. so I must have answered one of those questions again very nice uh, Chicho, well, I agree a central authority running a UBI system is open to corruption. What do you suggest instead? Do you think UBI would be an improvement from the current social security net in Canada? Would you? No, I don't think it would be. UBI would be an improvement. I think what needs to happen in Canada is payroll. Uh, people's income need to, the taxes on that need to be reduced big time, big time, right? In Canada, people are being taxed insane. The bureaucracy in Canada is over the top, over the top. Canada is considered to be one of the hardest countries in the Western world, in the world really, to start a business because there's so much bureaucracy involved in starting a business to become profitable that you need all these specialists the lawyers the accountants the uh, you, you gotta pass you, you gotta tick this the, the uh, dot this i cross this the, all this stuff that is virtually impossible it, like take real estate for example right to be a developer 40 years ago cost a fraction of what it what it takes to build a house now so one of the reasons that it costs so much to build a house now or to buy a house now is because of all the regulations, ridiculous regulations that they put into place, right? Some of the regulations are valid. A lot of them are not. They're just tax grabs, right? Oh, you need a license for this. You need to pay this much for this. You need to pay this much for this. It's over the top, right? It's over the top. Hate to see it. Uh, Graham, thank you for taking. By the way, Graham, if you need help with the troll action, let me know. I'll make sure I stay in the bottom of the chat so I can take care of the stuff. Okay. How many mods we have? We have one Catholic traditionalist. Uh, do you feel like being a mod? Graham, do you second this? W one of the mods, <laughs> Gina, <laughs> funny. <laughs> Did the yin yang command work? I don't know if it worked. I hope so. Let's check it out. Does the yin yang command work? I'm going to punch it in. Yin yang. Did I do it correctly? Oh, it did. Did it work? It did work. Oh, yeah. By the way, Gina, I pronounce yin yang the wrong way. I say yin yang. I can't help it. I, I realized I was saying it the wrong way because i looked it up i always thought it was yin yang so the command is actually yin yang not yin yang <laughs> you second catholic traditionist are you cool with being a mod for your information it was joseph that predicted seven years of famine while ad advising uh pharaoh that's what it was thank you catholic traditionalist because i've read the bible a long time i would be willing to help in that capacity but i'm entirely ignorant of what is involved okay catholic traditionist you're in mod uh, da -da 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 -da. oh i gotta type type out your name so i'm just gonna copy it mod Boop. granted mod privilege to catholic traditions wow i'm witnessing history now <laughs> you see catholic traditionists by the way 
the only real command that you need to know is backslash timeout and a user's name if you see trolls coming in or ban if you feel like you want to ban them really mods get power okay but and feel free just to chill uh feel free just to chill no no responsibility actually gina you spelt it right that's what it's supposed to be i pronounced it wrong i'm all the way down to the bottom of the chat gang oh, hold on let me read this very nice what are some examples of the banks owning the political parties in canada banks own the political parties in canada here um, very nice i'll give you an example in 2008 when uh, the financial collapse happened but the biggest scam at the time happened right the united states government announced that they were going to give 700 billion dollars to the banks right to make sure they had enough money to maintain the economic system so everything was stable right now united states has 330 million people right uh so, yeah 330 million people canada has 33 million i'll give you one guess as to how much money the harper government gave to the banks okay the united states gave initially and then after that they gave more of course right initially the united states announced they're going to give 700 billion dollars to the banks to make sure they had enough funds to for any excess demand that was coming in so they could lend money to people which they didn't right canada also did the same thing for their banks how much do you think canada gave them united states has 330 million people canada has 33 million people okay bitcoin was born born 70 billion dollars very nice well i guess 70 billion that's exactly what harper did right they gave the canadian banks 70 billion right per capita same amount i wrote an article on this back then <laughs> right it's the same scam it's the same scam do you think we are heading for negative interest rates in the u.s in all per, in all essence we we are negative interest rates right there's inflation right it's negative interest rates right now feline asked a good question okay let me read that thanks Graham, for pointing it out uh feline asked a good question and i want uh, to make sure they get to ask it chicho do you think if uh, you increase the minimum wage the price of everything uh it'll just increase even if the rich paid more in taxes no i don't think the price of everything would increase uh, i think that's a fallacy that's what those who don't want minimum wage increase would tell you right now i don't i don't i'm not a proponent of everybody increasing minimum wage to whatever everybody demands right there's got to be it's some kind of market deciding that right because some 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 small businesses won't be able to afford that right why because there's so much other stuff associated with that right Gina Chicho how do you educate people on how having more than two children increases increases resources burden in the whole whole of humanity Gina this is what I tell people <laughs> and it's not it's, it's not even education it's straight out telling them the way it is right when people are talking about oh you have to be environmentally friendly you have to be this we need to decrease this we need to decrease everybody needs to decrease this and some of those people that i hear saying this to me have kids right so i straight out turn to them and say this listen now i'm playing the devil's advocate but there's numbers behind this i tell those people listen as far as i'm concerned i could go live in a castle and run a hot tub 24 hours a day okay and have all the lights on for the rest of my life and i have a lower carbon footprint than you who just had a kid right so that's the level that it's at now i don't believe in depopulation i don't believe that people shouldn't have kids because of the environment or anything like this right i'm playing the devil's advocate but people have to really take into consideration everything right people attach themselves to one concept 
oh, you have to stop eating meat to save the planet. Meanwhile, they go out and have six kids, right? Oh, we, we want kids. We want to have four kids, three kids, right? Two kids, one kid. Then wait a second. Why are you telling the rest of the world to stop eating meat? If the rest of the world or a person, one other person, could eat a cow a day and have a smaller footprint than you having a kid, right? So there's a whole bunch of things in play. Right? I don't know if I answered your question properly or not. How do you educate people on how having more than two children increases resource burden on the whole of humanity? Like if they don't understand that a human being consumes <laughs> for their whole life, I, I really don't know where to begin with that, Gina. I really don't. Increase in many ways always results in more unemployment. Tony, Rumble, possibly, possibly. However, doesn't it also improve the society because it stabilizes those people who are below poverty as well, right? Does it offer people an incentive to look into acquiring more education, more experience, more tools so just because this job is no longer available to them they might have to rethink the choices they made in life to try to find a better life for themselves in a different industry right we can't we can't just say this or that we have to take into consideration that we're all in flux everything changes right there are people who used to be pissed uh, when cars came cars were introduced in our societies and those people were horse and carriage makers or people who used to have you know barns that fed the horses or created hay or grass to feed horses and stuff like this the economy the industry or evolution is novelty disruptive innovation right if the living standard of a whole society has to be kicked up by increasing the minimum wage then so be it there's going to be people who won't be able to get a job on that level then they have to re-educate retrain themselves acquire additional tools start thinking about maybe becoming entrepreneurs and creating something that contributes to society uh, that also brings in wealth for them right chicho nice uh, I have a sword now, just like Saint Michael the Archangel. Oh, trolls beware! Trolls beware! Catholic traditionists. Thanks for noticing me, feline. Yeah, thanks, Graham. By the way. Okay, I'm gonna read the list nine nine nine. Sorry to type this again, but have you read about Islam in any capacity? I've read some. I've read Bible, I've read the Old Testament, I've read a little bit of Buddhism, Hinduism, I've read, uh, I've read, I went through a period where I looked at a lot of religions, right? Have more than two children doesn't necessarily burden the whole of humanity. It's only if you raise capitalistic consumer brands. VC, I disagree, right? What if, what if you raise psychopath? What if you raise this? What if you raise this? There are families in poor parts of the world with many kids who each consume way less than people in the Western world. VC, sure. But why do impoverished nations, people who live places where the infant mortality rate is a lot higher than where we are maybe, have a lot of kids? That's because out of six kids, maybe two of them don't make it maybe three of them don't make it and that's their retirement plan they're having a lot of kids because that's their community that's their family that's their retirement plan they hope that the kids will take care of them as they get older so there's a lot of social things associated with that right catholic tradition as gina chicho many of those many uh many of those of uh 
use with large many many of those of us with large families are aware of the fact that children consume resources as do we all and we are aware of the need to raise them as responsible stewards of god's creation catholic tradition is and that's the key right education education is the key right because if you have six kids six children and five of them right go out and create uh, things that help society right come up with ways of renewable energy then you've contributed to society you you you've reduced your carbon footprint right so when i said i play devil's advocate when i tell people that is because i want to make sure that people really realize that it's not just about the kids it's not just about consumption rate it's not just about meat eaters it's not just about people who travel it's the whole system it's 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 not working right my pleasure uh less nights of old comic i highly recommend a netflix sci-fi thriller time traveler show on netflix called dark it was amazing oh i haven't seen it nights of old comic can you post that on our discord page please uh sci-fi i love sci-fi is very much predicts uh what the future will bring right by the way gang thank you for the follows thank you for the subs I know I don't recognize them on the stream just because I'm reading the chat a lot, but I see things pop up. Okay. Uh, ground sounds like CV and Catholic traditions are actually talking about the same thing, just using different language. Are they having more than two children doesn't necessarily burn? Yeah. Yeah, I agree in large part. Right. Speaking on Netflix, Art Altered Carbon season one was amazing, but season two was at best a C minus. Uh, I watched Altered Carbon. I watched both seasons. It finished a while ago. It wasn't bad. I didn't, I didn't mind it. It was fun. Knights of Oka. Have you watched Twelve Monkeys, a TV show? That's my favorite TV show. Sounds similar. Okay. I watched Twelve Monkeys the first two seasons, and then I stopped watching it. Graham. Very nice, says Chicho. What are some uh, policy changes or types of regulation you'd like to see introduced on banks in Canada um, first of all first of all in banks in Canada the service charges that they charge we need to go in there and knock those things off it is ridiculous what the banks are allowed to do for with their clients money and the bank accounts we have right unbelievable the service charges that banks canadian banks charge their customers are insane insane okay that's the first thing i would do okay should jesse ventura challenge biden and trump to uh, to a match cage oh yeah vc i'd be a 100 pro that right and biden and trump can tag team uh ventura can take on both of them and biden and trump are on the same team anyway right it's the same party so they can they can be tag teaming each other right and ventura can be solo he can take on both of them the expenses is another great sci-fi show oh, oh the expanse oh yeah expanse is fantastic expanse is amazing and devs devs was really good it finished uh, devs was fantastic the 12 monkeys movie was fantastic yeah jesse for sure cashes uh, in money in the bank this election is now a triple threat <laughs> the tv show i see that gets wild oh, really you think that graham you think 12 monkeys tv show is better no i think the movie is better the 12 monkeys the uh, tv show the first two seasons were good and then it's sort of shifted a little it might have gotten better can we get trump to dress like king kong bundy <laughs> i don't know <laughs> very nice chicho yeah i've had the same thoughts the server charges are a joke complete joke it's insane that's the first place i would do it okay so i should short the canadian housing market got it uh, the canadian housing market should be in deep trouble okay 
really like in my area like in my area house houses have dropped at least a hundred thousand dollars in the last year if 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 a house was worth a million not worth but it's a bubble if it was selling for a million a year ago at best is selling for nine hundred thousand right now right so anybody that was over leveraged i bought a house a year ago that had five percent down they put fifty thousand dollars down right and they paid their mortgage for a year right on a million dollars whatever it would be i don't know what it would be like three grand let's say right three four three uh, nine hundred fifty four five grand at least right so they paid sixty sixty thousand dollars in the last year so they paid a hundred and ten thousand dollars buying a house that was a million dollars just running numbers i haven't checked into these right i know the houses have dropped on average on a million at least a hundred thousand right so they they paid a hundred ten thousand dollars in the last year on a house that was worth a million last year but now is worth nine hundred thousand so they only got they don't have a hundred ten thousand dollars equity in that house they got ten thousand dollars equity in that house and the market is on the way down and there's way more houses up for sale now they're not moving right is there going to be an influx of money coming in to buy these houses possibly okay and it depends where you are alberta is is in deep trouble the housing market in alberta has collapsed and i don't think it's going to go up anytime soon okay saskatchewan i believe is the same because they they leveraged everything for the oil sector right they put everything into the oil industry which was a ridiculous thing to do bad management and what have they done in alberta i'll give you an example in alberta is a province in canada right beside british columbia right so bc is on the coast alberta is the next one over it's got the tar sands in it which is ridiculous on its own right and i worked in alberta in the 1990s doing geophysics right so i know about the industry and i know how it's run and stuff like this right so they put everything into the oil industry the oil industry has collapsed right no one the oil is, is ridiculous the, the world's run amok with oil right housing prices have collapsed right what is what's the alberta government doing now now it's basically for the last 40 years it's been the conservatives in charge of the alberta government right there was a four-year period with the ndp which are social democrat they got into power and then they lost and so out of the last 40 years at least it's been 36 years of that has been the conservatives right now the conservatives have come in and they're pointing the finger blaming all of canada saying hey uh we need help uh we're, our economy is collapsing here and stuff like this right so they started selling parks cutting uh benefits uh reducing uh, uh funds that they're giving to schools closing hospitals so they're cutting they're bringing austerity hardcore into alberta right now is that just because oil prices are down or is that because of mismanagement 90 percent is because of mismanagement 95 percent is because of mismanagement they put all their eggs in one basket and they told everyone to swallow the pill right insanity mismanagement i love how it turned into fantasy somewhere in the middle i know science fiction do you think there was a coup in north korea no uh, i know when i own own property in alberta the cash uh, the crash happened as i was selling my house so i lost seventy thousand. Oh, oh feline juice sorry to hear that but you know what relative to what it is now you probably got out easy right hey can you shout out the no no shout out uh min sorry i learned my lesson when i first got onto twitch <laughs> very nice chicho i actually looked into moving to victoria because i live in alberta but the renting situation is so atrocious there yeah what do you think needs to be done to improve the housing situation in victoria um first of all uh, it, it there's a lot of it's very complicated there's a lot of foreign money that came into vancouver and first into vancouver and then spilled out everywhere else right so went into victoria as well the regulations they've put in to build houses is ridiculous 
right there's a lot of empty homes here empty condos here but right now very nice i can tell you this two years ago it was very it rarely ever you saw apartment buildings saying room for rent right right now there's a lot of apartments that have room for rent okay one bedroom two bedroom spaces for rent so shift is happening right money laundering has decreased obviously the cash flow global cash flow has reduced right so as soon as liquidity drops which it has right now the odds are we're going to see a major housing crash in canada my guess unless unless the rest of the world starts burning and people wealthy people are going to run and one of the safe havens that can go to is canada because if they're well off then they have enough money in the bank to see them through the hard time they don't need to work to make money right so they might just come here as a safe haven and buy up a whole bunch of property and just sit on it until the world calms down we'll see how it plays out but my guess is it's going to crash elder god how are you doing graham has been going hardcore right there's been uh, some troll action going on so graham's been using his sword and catholic traditionalist is now mod and we welcome catholic traditionalists thank you very much remember alberta's pathetic social credit party oh god the re uh reform party right i've got to get ready for work i'm glad i could contribute to an interesting conversation today thank you gina and i hope you enjoy your day thanks for being here by the way okay peace now i asked okay very nice she showed uh do you think the speculation tax should be increased even higher in victoria i think uh the way it works out if you have a person that and in canada in vancouver it, it's ridiculous so this might not apply in other parts of the world but in canada what we had was basically a it was an international money laundering scheme people from extremely well-off locations were coming to canada buying up property because there was no questions asked so they were bringing millions of dollars into canada buying houses not one not one apartment but multiple houses and apartments right and just parking it empty right so there was empty there was lots of homeless on the streets people are looking for houses to live in but they can't right so the housing it was a major housing crisis here right and then what happened in british columbia where i am they introduced uh speculation tax so all those people that had multiple homes they had to tell the government what their main residence was and who was living in the other house if the other house was empty then they had to pay tax on an empty property right so all of a sudden those people that were parking their money they realized oh wow on a million dollar house now they had to pay extra 20 million twenty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars in taxes to park their money there so now people are re rethinking that and either renting out the houses or trying to sell their properties to get out so i'm not sure what the situation is we have to wait until it stabilizes but as far as i'm concerned the money laundering was through the roof right and once it starts going in the other direction it's going to go far right we'll see where it goes um but i know some people uh i heard some people because i know some real estate people and stuff like this that uh people were pulling out they were selling or trying to find tenants that they could take over the property and they could make sure they had tenants in there so it wasn't an empty home right a catholic traditionist to elder god thank you brother looks like i need to up my uh, creating consumption so that I'm, i am up to the task <laughs> nuclear nidia should i buy gold or bitcoin uh, what do you want to do with either of them right like what do you want to do are you looking into uh just parking it just buying parking like what's your financial situation are you gonna buy something and just leave it alone for 10 years 20 years 15 years and then come back to it or 
Are you looking into buying and selling within a year? What's the situation? It really depends on your time frame. Is this disposable money that you have or is this money that you're going to need within six months? Very important questions to have uh, to ask yourself. Right. Smith, 15 of my my neighboring homes are owned by uh, owned but vacant. I was shocked when I got here. Where are you located, Smith? And that's one of the problems we had in Canada. Right. Those people homeless on the streets, people can't people who are middle class can't find a place to live in while there's empty homes because people are just parked their money. You're in Richmond. Yeah, <laughs> Richmond was a disaster. <laughs> Smith. We had family there that sold their house in Richmond uh, two years ago and bought in Victoria, right? I, you know, I told them not to buy in Victoria because the market was going to go down, but they needed a place to live and they're senior citizens, so they bought. But we made sure they didn't up buy, they down bought, right? So they'd sold their property in Richmond and pocketed some of it, a lot of it, put it in the bank, right? So they have liquid assets so they can retire on, live happily. And they downsized the house. They didn't even really downsize the house because the property was uh, is cheaper in Victoria. They bought a lower property. So they have property all paid out for and they got money in the bank and they sold out in Richmond. Richmond is a disaster. Richmond is a disaster. Zare, how are you doing? Zare. Yeah. evening everybody chicho i made it i made some great comic book purchases have one last haul coming in i'm going to make a video showing you what i got oh, awesome sorry for sure link it up for us and let me know i would love to take a look there's some amazing buys out there right now dude i've seen some stuff go and i'm like i wish i could buy it right now but i can't right i'm the guy that's gonna get free money from the canadian government awesome nuclear i hope you're reevaluating uh your living condition and your job situation coming out of what's taking place right now do you have job security do you are you trained enough to uh, and do you have enough work experience to be able to find a job easily after this is over right if not you better you be using this time to retrain re-educate acquire additional tools or make connections right vc chicho what do you think about the current situation with first nations people in canada there seems to be a huge problem with poverty suicide and government neglect uh vc this is not new this has been the case for a long time a long time when i was doing geophysics in the 1990s i worked for first nations across canada really in ontario bc alberta um quebec um, those are the four uh, four provinces that I worked, uh, the geophysics I did. So I came across um, uh, tribes that were very well managed, that were that were doing very good, and I came across tribes that were very poorly managed. That were, the, the poverty was insane, right? What needs to be done? Um, I th I think we're on the right road with recognition of the crimes that were committed on them, right? Some people don't want to don't want to uh, appreciate what was done right a genocide was committed on the first nations populations in canada uh in the united states many places australia all over the place right from colonizations from europe specifically that i know of right so genocide was committed and it has that has repercussions but we're sort of on the right track but the corporations and the government really don't want to fast track that right um it's just slow mo it's just slow mo but i can honestly tell you the first nations in canada uh, have more say in their future now than they did 20 years ago okay they're building their communities now more than what was happening 20 30 years ago so we're going to see that roll out in the next 10 20 30 years so the first nations people are going to acquire more and more power in canada united states and rightfully so right they have proven themselves to be stewards of the land okay they have been on the front lines of preventing corporations from destroying land for polluting lakes and rivers right they have been on the front lines 
they deserve respect and support for that um, so that's my experience from that okay I'm in Ottawa there's no homes for sale here none that's got yeah it's the capitals have are a different economy like I live in Victoria so it's a capital of BC so it's a little bit different economy than some other parts of BC um, Ottawa is a Ottawa is a crazy place my Chinese is pretty good now though that's a good Smith <laughs> at what point is your life yeah, in your life should you start investing and what are some good beginning investments you can start investing investing at any point in your life if you're a teenager you're 13 years old do you like comic books start doing research into comic books and look at the graph and how the prices have increased in certain comics look into certain companies and stuff like this make a comic book investment purchase put it away try it out right you should you can start investing when you're 12 years old because investing isn't about just making money investing is about learning how the system works it's about learning how to do money management it's about learning who you are right there are people that can ha handle pressure there are people who can't handle pressure do you want to be in high risk or low risk all of that is experience right in your first investments or future investments there will be time in your life where you're going to make an investment in something you're going to lose money right that's experience so at one point in your life should you start making an investment as soon as you understand what investing means if you have disposable income if you have a passion invest in it why not right what could what could the worst thing that could happen to you when you're young and you make an investment you lose your money hopefully that's the only thing you're risking by the way don't risk your life or your family or your living situation or your health right don't gamble with your life sorry I could not be here I had to work in in pub yesterday doing stock road oh stock rotation hard and solo mode oh dude the elder god glad it's over you must be right Graham Chicho I asked you two months ago if I th if I thought real estate was going to be affected I didn't think it would be like this I'm looking at really nice property now for under hundred thousand ah oh, nice Graham nice yeah the real estate was a bubble everything we're in living in everything bubble but real estate in certain parts ridiculous bubble like if you were not buying into the same market like one thing people have to appreciate if you're in a certain system you're in a certain market if you sell in this market then you can buy in the same market right even if if it's when it's bubble unless you want to cash out you realize it's a bubble then get out right but if you're upgrading into a bubble market that could be one of the worst financial decisions of your life right so if you see a bubble happening and you're trying to upgrade right then if it's a bubble maybe you want to wait a little bit to see what happens right cheese monkey and congrats Graham. cheese monkey hey chicho Ch hey chicho used to follow your channel left for a while and recently joined first stream i've managed to cash live good to see you good to have you cheese monkey and thank you for coming back <laughs> i've had a few people tell me this oh dude i used to follow your work for the mass stuff thank you very much for that and then now they've graduated working they're like dude you're you're doing this stuff oh my god you're doing this stuff fantastic and they start following me again which is fantastic which is really fun so thanks for coming back first time buyer here looking to buy in calgary any advice uh advice appreciated cheers um i haven't looked into the calgary housing market yet i know it came down i think it came down last time i looked at it like a few months ago it, correct me if i'm wrong i think it came down 10 to 15 percent 20 percent even right i heard even 30 in some parts right so what you need to do right right now is take a look at especially alberta right because alberta is tar sands driven that's what they bank their money on right so look if you're looking into calgary specifically and i lived in calgary for a few months in the late 90s right 
And look into it and take a look at what oil is going to do, what the economy is doing, okay, and what the housing market has done. If oil's going down and they're shutting down everything and the housing prices are in a, going down like this, they haven't stabilized, right? Then they might have a ways to go yet. Oh, wow. I just saw, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uptime. We're over two hours, two hours. Damn it, man. We go crazy on these streams. Awesome. Um, let's go for another 10 minutes or so. I'm just going to, I'm going to scroll down, gang. Scroll down. I'm just going to catch some cheat shows. I'm going to catch up to the chat. Speedy Gonzalez style, by the way. Uh, very nice. Are you in favor of the coastal gas link or trans? No, I'm not in favor of the pipelines. I think it's ridiculous. It's horrendous because people don't realize that the tar sands are not viable. Okay, it, it's not the the world's. I'm a Jew. The world's a flood with oil, and it's going to be a flood with oil for years to come. All pipelines leak. Canada West Coast is built on tourism. It's nature that drives the BC economy. Okay, if there is and when there is a major oil leak, it's going to devastate the BC economy. No, I'm not in favor of the pipelines, not by a long shot. Okay, I'm actually opposed to them in a hard way. Uh, thanks for being a uh, light on this world. Go, nights of all coming. Got to sweet dreams, uh, or I hope you have a fantastic day, Nights of Old Comic. Okay. Okay, gang. Let's uh, let's call this a stream. I'm sorry if I missed a whole bunch of chat. Uh, my apologies. If there's additional discussion to be had, um, let us know, and I'll put more of these economy, um, economy, personal finance um, streams. Schedule them in on a regular basis. So if you do want a certain type of stream, go to our Discord page and just post a recommendation there. And if people second in and whatnot, we'll do more of a certain type of stream that you would like. And that goes doubly so for people who are supporting this work through Patreon, who are who are um, who've joined YouTube member uh, subscription, who are subscribed on Twitch and whatnot. Uh, I take these recommendations to heart and I want to make sure we're providing an open platform where we can have discussions right open discussions which is one of the reasons for the next two days tomorrow and the next day we do an open discussion on COVID-19 why are we doing this because there's complete censorship on major platforms right and while we're allowed to have discussion on Twitch I would like to have it on Twitch the video will not be loaded on YouTube but it will be available on BitChute just giving you guys a heads up okay aside from that gang I do share information, post stuff on Patreon. That's where I'm active. I don't put anything behind paywall, so you can just follow and see what I'm sharing, the type of content we're uploading, okay? And if you support this work, if you like what we're doing here, Patreon is a fantastic way to support this project, okay? We are live streaming this stuff on Twitch, so following, subscribing on Twitch is also a fantastic way to support this project and if you want to follow this work twitch is where you want to be at and that's twitch.tv backslash chicho live okay and patreon our patreon account is chicho.com backslash uh sorry patreon.com backslash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o and the reason i'm spelling these things out is because we are going to load audio on these as well on soundcloud i do announce these live streams on Twitch, uh, on Twitter, Gabs, Mines, VK, and Elo, 30 minutes before we go live. And I do share additional content on those platforms as well. Okay, news and information. As I mentioned, I will be uh, uploading the audio of this live stream and any live stream that we don't have to have any visuals for on SoundCloud. And that's soundcloud.com backslash chicho c h y c h o and one of the reasons we're doing this is because we needed a third platform to share information because of censorship and technical difficulties and whatnot so instead of a video we're going to go audio because i've had a lot of people ask me over the years to create podcasts so we're sort of treating this as sort of like a podcast and we'll up our game as well as uh as we 
go further into this project okay and i am i am going to be uploading this video to youtube and bitshoot bitshoot technical difficulties allowing and youtube censorship permitting everything will be loaded on bitshoot as much as we can will be loaded on youtube okay and as i mentioned there's going to be things that we're no longer going to be sharing on youtube because youtube is deleting people's channels if they're sharing certain types of information we were talking about personal finance and investing and we do have a personal finance and investing playlist and videos available on youtube and there's videos available on bitshoot as well okay and we do talk a lot about personal finance and investing and whatnot on uh in those videos and uh there's a lot of information being shared there okay thank you gang for being here mods thank you for taking care of business catholic traditionalists welcome to the gang welcome to the gang i hope you use your sword um in good faith and well right and i hope you keep it sharp aside from that gang if you can join us tomorrow night at 7 30 p.m pdt or pst my time we're doing um a live stream on COVID-19 and then we're going to follow that up with part two of a discussion for COVID-19 at 9 a.m Friday morning okay so we're going to do Thursday evening Friday morning one two punch so total three and a half hours of open discussion for COVID-19 that's sort of a follow-up to the data the content that we we're creating regarding COVID when we looked at all the data since basically late January or mid January, we're talking about COVID, right? We saw this coming a mile away, right? Because that's one thing you need to do. You need to be, you need to be ahead of the game when it comes to personal finance as to what's going on globally. Okay. Aside from that, thank you for being here, gang. Lots of love. And I hope you have an amazing evening, morning, day. Bye for now, gang.